Okay, everyone. So I wanted to uh, to go through these um, the course material for this week really quickly. We've got some very important information that we need to cover. So let's uh, let's take a look at uh, these video notes. So we're talking about good programming, and uh, and we've already covered um, how our code is going to be designed in terms of the format and indentation and um, structure and all that. And we'll cover that in more detail a little later in this in these video notes but uh, we, we need to make sure that we understand the the characteristics of a good program so we talk about efficiency and there are three primary ever, uh, areas of efficiency the programmer effort the execution time and the memory space so let's focus on the last two first so the execution time is uh, how hard the CPU has to work to run that program so we need to make sure that as we develop that application that the um, that the platform that we run this on is going to um, going to have enough processor power to run this application um, and memory space is also important we want to make sure that we write our code so it doesn't uh, consume more memory than we need to run the program and we need to make sure more importantly that we release that memory when we're done with it while the program is still running um, and flexibility is also important that means it uh, serves multiple purposes so if we look at um, PowerPoint for instance uh, we we look at the application that I'm using right now to uh, to present you with death by PowerPoint um, but we, as we've discovered in this class, we can also use PowerPoint as a tool to to create our flowcharts for our um, our algorithm of pseudocode. Reliability is also important, and that means that uh, that it performs its in intended purpose each time the application is run. Um, <clears throat> and basically, that means that we we have the same. Um, the same results it, each time the uh, the application is executed, um, and the the output or the results of that execution is reliable. Portability is uh, it is one issue that um, that you it's really hard to achieve these days because every um, every manufacturer has a proprietary. Um, uh, way of processing data and storing data and so on and so forth but the the idea is to run uh, to write an application once and run it anywhere and uh, it's possible it's just kinda hard to do and you'll you'll learn more about that when you guys start getting into your your higher level, higher level languages um, robustness means that <clears throat> that it provides you meaningful results despite the input that means that if you give it the input that the application is looking for, it will give you the the results that, uh, that you're supposed to have. If it gives you, if you provide that application input other than what it's expecting, it will give you some message, uh, preferably an error message saying, "Hey, you've entered the improper um, values. Please enter those values again." Uh, user friendly is is very very important. Um, I mean, there are a lot of software companies that have made lots and lots of money off of applications that uh, that are user friendly, where people can install it and immediately start using it without having to read um, volumes volumes of information to uh, to learn how to use it. Self documenting code. I've talked about this since week two when we first started talking about variables. Those variable names are in themselves um, self-documenting code. So as you create your variable names that will have meaning through the duration of the program, the, the, variable, the variable name itself will document what that variable is going to be doing. So that's self-documenting code. This means to use meaningful variable names and to not use single letter variables. I, I still people I still see people doing that in uh, in applications and you're losing points for that. <clears throat> um, clarity and simplicity is very very important when you're writing your code. This is talking specifically about how your code looks and I, and again I've spoken about this since week two when we started looking at our pseudocode and the and even the C code. You need to make sure that uh, that it's formatted properly um, to include the indentations and so on and so forth. We'll get into that in just a second, but um, 
very it's very important to make sure that you have your uh, your brackets, curly brackets, or uh, braces, or parentheses, or square brackets, or whatever the tool that is being used to enclose code. Make sure that you open that and close that properly, and preferably on the uh, the for the brackets, they need to be on the same column. And we'll we'll take a look at that shortly. Um, and again, we'll get into the variables. Make sure that they that you have uh, meaningful identifiers for your variables. And aside from the the self-documenting code of variable names, make sure that you document your code thoroughly. Now, I I bring this up again because it's possible to over-document your code. If you have a paragraph of information for a single control structure, you might have too much information in, the, in in that documentation so just uh, just make sure that you um, document but document carefully so in terms of that formatting we want to make sure that uh, and, and especially when we get into our modular design the use of blank lines between our modules makes the code a lot easier to read and I've spoken again since week week two about the indentation and formatting of that code. So in each module, the contents of that module is indented uh, uh, some space, and then the contents of each control structure within those modules are indented even further. Um, now this, uh, in those regards, when you're using those curly brackets or braces, make sure that those braces are on the same column so you can tell what's um, what's open and what's closed to make sure that you close those curly braces. Um, so you can also declare your variables on the same line and we'll, we'll take a look at that here in just a few seconds. Um, it, as long as they are of the same data type. So programming languages such as C and C++ and Java have libraries of um, uh, functions that uh, that can be used, um, and the there are a number of libraries in each programming language that uh, that we talk about in this class. Some are built in, and some are user defined. So let's take a look at uh, some of the concepts that I've discussed so far, and um, and we'll see if we can clear some of this stuff up. All right, so real quick, we are talking about um, the the curly braces, and you'll see that in this for loop we have an opening curly bracket here and a closing curly bracket here and they, they are on the same column and it's easy to see when it's structured this way when you've opened a curly bracket and haven't closed it and uh, and same for this for loop and the, you have a curly bracket here and the closing curly bracket there you can see when one is open and one uh, and the other hasn't been closed so back to the um, the subject of the libraries, you'll you'll you probably have noticed that every C program example that we've used in this class thus far has include statements up above that has at least one uh, one include statement, and you have to have uh, at least one because these this is what brings in your C code library or the libraries for that programming language. So in this case, we're using stdio.h which is a library of functions for C. And uh, included in those library of functions are printf and scanf, and those are used in, in this code. So um, there are, um, uh, I guess, uh, encyclopedias of these libraries that, that, that explain specifically what functions are available in each of those libraries and when to use them and so on and so forth but that's really beyond the scope of this class you just need to understand that uh, that those libraries are going to be important now you can also use user defined functions um, which means that uh, that you, you effectively write your own function within the code and then you can um, refer to that function later on in the code um, now it's also possible in a programming language like C to create your own library and have functions within that library. Now that is certainly beyond the scope of this class, but and you'll you'll get into that as you get into the uh, the third and fourth um, classes in C plus plus or C or Java. But uh, but at this point, I, I just need you to understand that. 
functions are contained in a library, the um, the uh, program defined functions are contained in the library, and but you have to include that library in your code to to make those available to you. So when we're calling these functions, we need to make sure that uh, in 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 a lot in a lot of cases we're passing values from one program to another, um, and it's important to remember that that the data types from uh, when, when you're calling that program, the data type going from the call function needs to be the same as when it lands in that function. So. Um, now it's also important to understand that there are different ways of passing passing those variables. You can either pass them by value or pass them by reference. And if you pass a variable by value, when it lands at the uh, at the destination uh, sub program, it's going to create a new memory location with a new label or new identifier for that memory location. Which uh, which is important to understand because if you are trying to um, change the value of that variable that's created in main, then then you need to pass that by reference. And by reference, that means that you will, uh, when it lands in that destination sub program, is going to create a new label for the same memory location. So let's take a look real quick how that works. Okay, so. In this program, we've got a main program, and uh, and you'll see that we have main. And now, notice that I no longer call this a module because this is a program, and we have we start with main, and we close that within program, and then beneath that we have a subprogram called switch, and then we end that subprogram. So these are effectively two separate programs in one piece of code, um, and now this subprogram switch in itself is a function and we'll see how that works. So up here at the top, now you remember that I said that we can declare variables of the same data type in the same line. So we are declaring my number and your number as an integer. Now notice that uh, that integer is always singular because it is a data type. Is you're not uh, you're not talking about the number of variables, you're talking about the data type. So you, we, we declare those two variables as integers, and again, those go out and um, identify uh, both locations in memory and identify those integer data types, and so only integer values can go into those memory locations. So these next two lines will set the memory location for uh, labeled my number to 156 and set the memory location labeled your number to 293. And then we will call our subprogram or our function called switch, and uh, we will pass to it my number and your number. So it's going to go down to this subprogram, and notice what happens. Now it's sending two integers down to this location, and we identify both of those as integers. But uh, notice this second number is being passed as reference. Now remember I said that if you don't ad identify that as being passed by reference, it's going to pass it by value, which means that it's going to create a new memory location and um, and a new label for that new memory location. Um, whereas if you pass by reference, this is simply going to put a new label called number two on the same memory location that your number is assigned to. So the same memory location has um, two labels. So let's take a look at that and see how that works. Okay, so again, we declare your number as an integer. Um, actually, it's my number and your number as integer. And your number is set to a specific memory location as an integer. And then we set your number to a value of 293 and that it gets entered into that memory location as an integer value at that time. So we um, we then call this switch function and send my number and your number to uh, uh, to this uh, this function. So the integer number one 
is uh, is it has its own memory location. I don't have that depicted over here, but um, the integer number two is sent as reference. So you'll see that integer number two down here is a label for the same memory location as your number uh, since it's being passed as reference. So when we enter this uh, this function, it sets the the value of the variable number one to 293 and remember that this is a different memory location as what was defined up uh, in the initial uh, main program. So it says it's to the, that variable location is 293 and then we address the memory location labeled as number two and we set that to 156. Now remember this label number two is the, uh, is a label for the same memory location as what was declared as your number in uh, the main program. So once that is done we end program and we go back up to this uh, this portion of the main program and then we write my number which if you remember was never changed because it came down here and created a new a new, uh, a new variable, new memory location, set the value and then when this subprogram went away that memory location went away because it's that variable is no longer uh, the memory location is no longer being accessed. So we print out my number which is still 156 and it's printed right here and then we uh, print some space and then print your number and remember that when your number landed down here we pass it by reference so the the new label number two was set to a value of 156 so 156 will be printed out twice in this um, in the this program which is a main program and a sub program or function okay and this uh, this, this kind of covers the same thing now now note that that when you're passing those variables um, you probably saw that in the um, on that example code when, when you're passing those variables in our syntax it, if, uh, unless it was otherwise specified when it lands in the um, the parameters of that function the um, the the default is to to send it by uh, send it by value which is going to create a new memory location so you have to uh, d define specifically to send that by reference if you want to change that initial uh, the initial variable value so that's all I have for this week. So hopefully that uh, that clears up the any any questions that you might have had on the material this week. Um, if not, drop me a line, or uh, better yet, ask the question in the questions and comments area for this week, and we'll get that addressed.